in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of the one only God, His Word, and His Spirit. Because many, or some people imagine that we Christians worship or adore three divinities. Well, no, we adore one God. We believe in one God. That's what we say in the creed. In, in Greek, pistevo isenan theon. That's what we say in Latin, credo in unum deum. Well, that's what we say in English and in all languages. I believe in one God, one only God. So, in order to clarify a uh, misunderstanding about the Bible, let me first uh, once more uh, kindly or humbly warn against people uh, who perhaps were at a certain stage or at certain point scholars, and they are criticizing a lot the Bible, including the New Testament. And of course, when they embrace other religions, uh, as I have seen on YouTube, they do not have, they lose that critical sense. And they are not critical at all. And they accept everything without any critical sense. But let's, before, rather than talking about other religions, Let's repeat what uh, actually Dr. Just as an example, Dr. Daniel B. Wallace uh, has said or had to say as an answer to someone called Ehrman, Barth Ehrman, I think. The same answer is also addressed to other people who left ministry who even left Christianity. Uh, for example, Ehrman says that the addition to Mark, that somewhere, I think after verse uh, 8 of chapter 16, uh, which ends by saying that women were afraid, 16 chapter, yeah, verse Yes, exactly. Uh, then they say that this was an addition, saying that Jesus did appear to the disciples and that the woman did talk about his resurrection. So let's suppose that this is an addition, okay? If it is an addition in Mark, if, well, can, would you like also to take away the last chapter of St. Matthew, of St. Luke, the first chapter of Acts, which exactly relate the same facts, in other words, and in more details. So, even if a text has been added at some stage, as some people claim, yet, you find the equivalent and the content in other texts of the same New Testament. Then uh, Dr. Wallace was right to say that the variants, the textual variants, are insignificant. 75% of them are insignificant. Uh, nominative instead of an accusative case or vice versa. We, we do have a huge number of manuscripts of the New Testament, as many as, until today, 5,752. So this is the book which is most well attested to in the antiquity, let's say until the 6th century at least. Usually, we have many manuscripts. We, we have as many as 20 manuscripts of some works of pieces of literature or philosophy or history in antiquity. We do have, as Daniel Wallace says, a million, more than a million quotations 
by the church fathers of biblical texts, I mean of New Testament texts. Let alone one, uh, let me see, let alone 10,000, 10,000 uh, Latin manuscripts. So when you get the other old, old, old versions, then you have an idea about the original. Sometimes there is a transposition of words. For example, Jesus or the Lord. Well, it's 25% of these variants. Thus, the meaning remains the same. Some of these variants is the article in front of a proper noun, a proper name, with the article or without the article. If you want, if you are looking, as uh, Professor Wallace says, for meaningful variants, then they are less than 1%. And uh, textual criticism, of course, helps us to identify that most probably this was the original. And there is not one single doctrine touched by these uh, variants. So, the, the Trinity. Someone claims, I think Mr. Gerardo or something like that, he claims that the Trinity was not there. Well, who had any interest whatsoever to, to invent the Trinity? Is it St. Paul? It's absurd, because St. Paul was a, a, a true Jew, very close in his monotheism. Uh, who was it? Pagans? They didn't have any trinity. They did have triads, which means three different beings, like a god, a father god, a mother god, and an infant god. But this is not our trinity. The, <clears throat> the suffering of Jesus, the crucifixion of Jesus, well, no one had any political any political goal behind the crucifixion of Jesus. On the contrary, it was a shame to be crucified. There were other... Uh, we are told that what we have here is the Pauline Christianity, as St. Paul wanted it, as Paul exposed it to the pagans. Well, how about St. John? How about the Gospel of St. John, which starts with the Logos, Logos, which probably reproduces the Aramaic Memra, the Hebrew Davar. There is no contradiction, no essential contradiction between the John 9, I mean the writings of St. John, and those of St. Paul, and of course not those of the Synoptics. We are told by Mr. Gerardo or others that some books were destroyed. Some branches of Christianity disappeared. Well, what sorts, what branches? Well, let's talk about one of them, the Gnostics. The Gnostics used to say, just among many other things, that the human body is evil. And that, was, that it was not created by God. So, they used to teach that marriage was evil. So it cannot be complained that in the Gnostic writings, Mary Magdalene would have been described as the wife of Jesus, although wife in Greek is the Gune Gynaikos, uh, or Suzyros, but never kinonos, or kinonos, kinonos means uh, the partner, partner in the thought. Because actually, according to the Gnostics, the human body is an evil, so marriage is a double evil, and also, uh, let's say, procreation is a triple evil, because it multiplies evil. So who are these Gnostics? They, they believed in very, very strange things. 
and many of them committed suicide. Why? Because, and this is the sort of moral suicide or psychological suicide which we read in the so-called Gospel of Judas, where Jesus cynically or in a pathologic way, of course it's not the real Jesus, it's the Gnostic Jesus, asks Judah to rid him, Jesus, of his body, which is a prison for him. We, I repeat that nobody had any interest whatsoever to say that Jesus was crucified. And if you want a model, Mr. Gerardo or whoever, then Jesus is the perfect model, as you see in his life, in his biography in the Gospels, and also as other non-Christian and extra-Christian sources say. Anyway, about the crucifixion of Christ. Well, how about the book of history by, by Pliny, Pliny the Old. Pliny the Old, who accompanied Vespasian, the future emperor, in, in the year 67, when uh, at the siege of Jerusalem, a siege completed then by Titus, Vespasian's son. But actually, this text of the history of Pliny the Ancient, or the Old, has been used and quoted by Tacit or Tacitus in the Annals book, where he says that uh, Christus had been put to death under Pontius Pilate, and that was in the reign of Tiberius Augustus, or Tiberius Caesar. Caesar. Anyway, uh, I would uh, really stop here, uh, because then we would need to listen or to watch to the rest of the YouTube in order to answer more. Thank you.